Hey guys, Mike here. So today we're pouring this 36 by 28 garage floor. It's attached to the basement floor of a house that we just finished pouring. That's part one of this three part series. This is part two. Part three will be the third section of this floor where you're going to be able to watch me use a mini me trial to finish the concrete. Now if you've never heard of a mini me trial, you're going to have to like and subscribe and come back and watch me show you how to use that very small very lightweight power trowel to finish concrete but today let's just get this 36 by 28 garage floor poured so what that green stuff we're pouring on that's called crete heat and the reason people use that is for insulation for radiant heated concrete floors i don't know if you can see there's white radiant heat tubes that are kind of press down into that crete heat and that's kind of what it's for is to be able to lay those tubins in there press them down in and it holds them in place as well as insulates the floor so the the heat goes up into the concrete not down into the subgrade those are those come in panels you can buy those in panels kind of like styrofoam sheets of styrofoam except they kind of click together pretty neatly and they also when put together really tightly they act kind of as a vapor barrier also so again the reason we're using a pump truck on this is because we just got done pouring the basement floor that was 48 by 24 four inches thick and I show you how we pour a basement floor down inside nine foot walls in part one using a power screed to do that and we're going to use a power screed on this garage too now it has a slight slope towards the center. You can see there's a center drain there. And we're going to use the power screed with the garage that has the center drain and just show you how we do that and not mess up the slope at all either. Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to get out enough concrete to actually have something to do with. So I got one guy just finishing up in the basement. He's climbing up the ladder, getting out of there. And then the rest of the crew here is... Uh, Eric's kind of coming in behind me. He's fine-tuning the concrete. Now Luke is too. And then we got another guy, Jim, there. He's mag floating the edges. So on the edges, we used the laser, shot a grade, marked it, snapped a chalk line, and then we glued on that what's called that ISO strip foam. That keeps the concrete from sticking to the walls, number one, but it also allows it to expand and contract without really supposedly... Uh, causing any cracks from sticking to the concrete walls so what we'll do today is we'll have one guy will power trial the basement floor one guy will finish and power trial the garage floor and then I'll power trial the little third section that you'll see in part three and then we'll have a fourth guy here just kind of help go around and steel trial hand trial edges and stuff like that when we when we go to finish all the concrete today. Now if you want to learn how to do this stuff, if you want to learn how to pour concrete like we do, how to screed, how to hand finish, how to power trial finish, how to even stamp concrete and stuff like that, you, you got to join the Concrete Underground. That's my private training. There's a link for that down in the description below. I got all my training videos in there about all kinds of things to do with concrete. So you can check that out. You can learn from me. You can contact me in there. If you got any questions, I can help you with estimating, help you with starting your own business if you want to do that. But you got to join the Concrete Underground for all that stuff. You can see there's a second truck sitting there waiting. That's the truck that's going to finish the garage and do the third section. Right now we're just trying to get this other truck dumped out so he can get out of the way, get washed up, get back to the concrete plant. And then we can get our, what is our technically our fourth truck of today in behind the pump mixing up while we get this stuff leveled out so when we dangle pump like this you can see we're kind of going back and forth in about six foot sections like we know how many yards of concrete will do a certain area so we try to keep that area as square as possible and not just kind of dangle the concrete all over the place because the, the more square the section is, I guess, if you want to call it that, the easier it is to power trial finish, too. Because sometimes the two loads don't cure up or dry up the sa at the same rate. And you don't want, you know, jagged sections of concrete all over the place trying to power trial finish that, either. 
This truck here is just about out. We used a little bit of him in the basement. And then he's going to do about two-thirds of this. Then the fourth truck will finish up this and do the, the third section. The third section is about 14 by 32, four inches thick. Now we're actually working as a sub on this job. So we're subbing out from the guys that did the foundation walls. And they're kind of working for the homeowner here. And they basically, you know, they basically spec out the concrete. They spec out the vapor barrier, the ISO strip, the mix design. So all I really need to do is, you know, I'll come shoot grades, figure the total yardage, call the concrete company, get it ordered for the day we want, line up the pump, and just, you know, kind of coordinate everything. But the far as all the specs and stuff, those are all done in advance. So I'm just checking the level of the what is the drain right there making sure that you know we get that at the exact level we want it at a little bit lower than obviously the outside part of the foundation so eventually you know when the garage is built and the homeowners parking in here any any water that drips off the cars will run to that center drain You can see that truck's doing quite a bit of this, so we'll definitely have plenty of concrete to finish up with. That's always a concern when you're doing concrete on top of that crete heat because the nubs in there, they stick up about an inch, and there's a bunch of them, as you can see. Um, and then, you know, trying to figure concrete and get an average of the bottom of that crete heat to the top of the nubs it sometimes can be pretty tricky so you're better off definitely over figuring and not running short on concrete yeah I believe that just finished him off so we'll get all our grade pads struck and that's what we're doing right now and then we'll be able to use the power screed the battery screed to finish screeding this down you're gonna see how easy that's gonna be we generally, probably because we've been doing it this way forever, just like to screed our grade pads by hand the way we're doing right now. Not for any special reason. We could use the battery screed if we wanted to. But it's just the way we've always done things. That's a 14 foot screed. The bar on the battery, the battery screed is 14 feet also. Now the battery screed we're using is from DeWalt. That's new for them their power shift screed and the battery technology on that is new for them too that goes to their they got a a compactor that goes to two types of compactors it goes to actually and then they got a backpack vibrator that battery goes to they got a uh, drill it goes to like a core drill big drill that you can core drill holes in the concrete with so it, there's basically five of their new type of concrete tools the same battery goes to and that battery I don't know it lasts forever on the power screed I think I've only had to put one charge on it all summer and that's doing you know basically you know a floor a day is what we do five days a week So in order to get your concrete floors flat or even with a slight slope to the center like this one has, that's about the speed you're going to want to go by. You're going to want to let your rakers do most of the work, get the concrete to the level it needs to be at, and then you just pull the power screed or the battery screed over the top of it. And I'm basically just focusing on my two ends. I want to make sure my two ends are touching the pads. And then that I know I've scored and I know right where the level is I need to be at. That's Luke and Darren kind of up towards the, the screed raking right now. Then Eric's just kind of in behind them. If, if they're high, like he's pulling it out, you can see they're a little bit high. So he's pulling it out so no one has to stop. We can just keep going from one end of the pad to the other.
can see as I pull my boots back too, I just kind of tap in some concrete where my boot came out. And I don't want to I don't want to leave a hole there and have to go back and fill that area in afterwards either, but that's basically that's kind of half the garage right there we just did in a couple minutes. That's how fast it is. That's why we like to dump a whole truck right out because it takes a lot less time to get it leveled out and screeded than it does to actually dump the concrete out. So what we'll do here is we'll just pour out enough so we're not too high in there. We'll, we might even leave a little bit of a hole now that we're on that last truck. And then we'll get it down really close to the level where we need it to be. And then we'll jump over and do that third section. That's not going to be on this video though. Just the finishing of that third section will be in part three. The third section is basically flat. Like I said, it's... It's 14 by 32, top of wall. So we're just match, matching, we're mag floating the edges right to the top of the wall. And then we'll screed it down using a, a power screed. So real simple stuff there. It's really the finishing of that part that is a little different than normal. I talked a little bit in the first video about why we use a dangle pump like that on the basement. But even on a garage you can see how much easier it is to dangle pump and get the concrete put right in place versus having to use the chute from the truck and having to pull it around. Especially if your access isn't good. You can't see it out front but the subgrade in the front of the garage is about four feet below where we are so we wouldn't have had much slope on the chute if we'd had to dump it right out of the truck. We we could have tried to get it out back, but the back soil here, the subgrade out back is really soft, really kind of loose stuff. I don't think the concrete trucks even would have been able to back out here without their tires getting uh, spun up in the, in the loose soil. There, that's me running the power screed right there. So again, let me know your thoughts on just how we attack a 3628 garage like this. If you want to learn from us, join the Concrete Underground below. Leave, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions about what we're doing here today. The mix design is uh, a 3500 PSI with fiber mesh. Got water reducer in it. Our basic same floor mix we use on all our pours except for the exterior finish stuff. And then what we're doing now is we're just trying to get a little bit more concrete in there. Now that we know we're right down to the very end. We don't want to waste it or have to shovel it out if we don't need to. And then I'm going to screed down just a little bit more. So again, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.